Haley Jones, just a dynamic player in transition, 6-1 point forward, an excellent playmaker. With the sixth pick in the 2023 WNBA draft. Has it. And the Pac-12 player of the year here. Gets it up, good if it goes. Haley Jones meets the ball. Stanford journey ends as an athlete there. Just trying to get myself mentally prepared to be a professional, how that's gonna look. The Atlanta Dream Select. I ordered my cap and gown last week. I pack up my entire life on the West Coast. First time leaving the Bay in 21 years. Haley Jones, Stanford University. Now I'm a professional athlete for the Atlanta Dream. The last month has been a whirlwind. My time at Stanford kind of got cut short. So we lost in the second round. We were upset by Ole Miss. It was really disappointing just to go out like that. To swallow that pill is difficult because you felt like there was more in the tank. You know, the next day, whatever, after you have to sit with it, it's understanding that I'm ready for my next chapter. I'm getting ready for the WNBA. It's time to get to work, start training. And my time at Stanford wasn't a failure. You won this many Pac-12s, national champ, all this jazz, whatever. So, but yeah, after we lost, I took a day off and I was back in the gym, dying in workouts with my strength coach. Worked out doing two days for just about a week. The commissioner called me Maybe like a week after uh, my career ended at Stanford, I want to say. We got on the phone, she invited me to draft. It was a pretty quick conversation. I was like, yes, ma'am, I'll be there. Okay, good morning. It's Haley Jones. Um, it's about eight something. Um, it's draft day. It's draft day. Um, but yeah. I'm going to take this around with me. We're going to go to the Empire State Building with the rest of the draftees. The day of the draft, I got to have the camcorder until when I first walked downstairs, I left my room and Aaliyah came out of hers at the same time. We we're going to go down together. And she sees me with it and immediately clowned me. And she's like, what are you doing? Where do you get that from? All that jazz. And then it just became a big hit throughout the day. Morning of the draft, us as a class went to the Empire State Building. I think that call time was pretty early. It was like 7.30 or something, and I was still on West Coast time. I was a little tired in the morning. I had to turn on, you know, my persona, I guess. I wasn't ready for it. Before things get too hectic, here's the fit check. Got up, got dressed, put on a little fit. I'm wearing this cool like Nike jacket. I get down there and everybody's in the WNBA hoodie, so I had to Run up to the room, I was stressed out, grabbed the right hoodie, ran back down, we hop on the bus, and then we just rolled over to the Empire State Building. We had a little presentation with the commissioner and Kelsey Mitchell. They lit the building orange, took a picture. There were like a thousand photo ops. Get up to, I don't know what floor it was, but it was like the second highest. And then they take us out there and we're looking out of the city, all this stuff. It was really cool seeing Central Park compared to all the skyscrapers. And from there, it was kind of my first time in New York. I got to explore the city a little bit, walk around. So draft day was pretty busy, but I would say that's how I wanted it to be. It felt like every other day for me, because every day for me is busy. So I didn't want it to feel out of the ordinary with already so much I knew later in the day was gonna change. So I wanted as much to feel like my routine in a way. Hi. I'm here with my two bodyguards. Yo. <laughs> we're about to mob around the city. Um, we've never been to New York before, so we're gonna go on the subway for the first time and go get a slice of pizza and go to the Brooklyn Bridge. So, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> gonna go on the subway for the first time. Um, not as glamorous as I expected, but I'm excited. Let's get to it. Well, so yeah, the subway, that was more ghetto than I expected. I thought it was gonna be very glamorized. It was not, it was not super cute. Get down there, I walk down these stairs. I'm like, what is this? Like, it was just not what I wanted it to be. 
First of all, I don't know how to use the Metro card thing. I'm looking at you guys for help. I'm like, what buttons do I click? All of a sudden, I swipe the card to go through. I went too fast or something. I still don't know what I did wrong. I walk in, bam, bruise my thighs, basically. Huge just sound. I'm embarrassed. I try to play it off, but in reality, I'm in a lot of pain. That really hurt my thighs. Damn. I did not read the thing. Um, here's the train. We're on our way to Joe's Pizza. Um, excited to get my first New York slice. I'm very hungry. This will be my only food before the draft, so I hope I don't starve later. We hopped on the train. And then I'm told we took the wrong train, so we get off. Turns out it was the right train. So we have to wait for the next one. We hop back on. And then we got to pizza. Yeah. Encore, encore, bravo, bravo. Mm -hmm. Approved by Ms. Jones. Got a piece of New York pizza. It was fine. It just tasted like pizza. And then we went to the Brooklyn Bridge. Lots of tourists. I was one of them, I guess. Yeah, what well, they did. Draft day was pretty busy, but I would say that's how I wanted it to be. I wanted to make the most of it. And so getting to explore New York, go to the Empire State Building, to have a good chunk of time set out for that was what I wanted it to be like. I feel like I'm a busy body in general and I was able to enjoy the experience because I enjoyed the people I was around. Hey, hey, hey. I'd be scared to fight him. You see that dude? He was beating that pull up, talking about. So I made oh, a playlist yeah. for the draft. Mm. Where that's fine. So, so I'll play it in my um, Girl, you know I love you. <laughs> <laughs> every word, every word. I gotta turn it up a little bit. Turn it up <laughs> Lenny Williams, Cause I Love You is literally the best song to ever be created. I have spent a hefty amount of time learning the song. Like around, I don't know, maybe the four or four and a half minute mark is when he just starts talking. And that's what I really wanted to lock in and learn when he's talking about, you know, how the car parked in the driveway and this and that, play my records that I just didn't want to hear me anymore, like all that stuff that sets it apart for me. That's my one, that's my go-to. Nobody expects it. And then when I say it, they're like, you don't know it. And then I prove them wrong and the whole time they're like, oh my God, I'm sweating by the end, I'm hot, it's a whole thing. Getting ready for the draft, it was really fun getting to get dressed in that little environment just with a small amount of people. Did it? You want the charger? Yeah. yeah. Draft outfit had been in the makings for a while. We ended up coming across Sergio Hudson and he did Charlie Collier a few years ago. And he just has amazing stuff. And he's fitted people like Beyonce and Michelle Obama. And so I was already starstruck. And then they reached out to him and he was like, oh my gosh, yeah, let's do it. And so we found this pantsuit that he had done with the same jacket that I wore, but I didn't want to do pants because like legs are 70% of myself. And so I was like, oh, let's show them off. You got them. So we did a skirt instead. And then we did the bralette underneath. Um, so I went to LA to try it on and I was nervous when I first looked at it. I was like, can I pull this? Like it's pretty bright green, it's velvet shoulders, like velvet on the bra. So I was a little intimidated put it on and I was in love with it. I feel like a mix of a superhero and like a fashion model with the shoulders. Yes. <laughs> the skirt was it's definitely a better move. 
right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's just thank you, Spirit. Someone's makeup and hair was done. Everybody left the room and it was just me and my mom. And so, you know, her helped me get dressed. It felt like I was young again. Well, I guess I'm only 21, but like, I felt like I was little again. She helped me get dressed just for like the most special occasion to date. This is my uh, great grandma's ring that she gave to me before she passed away. Um, so this will actually be your first time wearing it? Yeah. Yes, this will be my first time wearing it. So, it's only right. Oh, it's yeah, it's been in the safe ever since, waiting for the right occasion. It's gorgeous. Okay, we're checking in. Fit check. Bottom to top. Hair done, makeup done. I think we're about ready to roll. Got the entourage here. <laughs> Behind the scenes. Everyone say hello. Hello. So once we got dressed, we went outside and we took some pictures, and then it was like around the corner from the hotel. So when we came back, there was cameras there, there was all the other girls, uh, you know, kind of ready to go. They're all in their outfits as well. So it was so cool seeing everybody just look like just models, like everybody was so just gorgeous. Dorka, who are we wearing? Tell me, tell me about your outfit. Um, little bodycon moment. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, we got the little glitter smiles, heels. Yes, little blings, but gorgeous. Kalia. Yeah. Simple. Purple. Dude, purple. It's eating. eating. It's eating. <laughs> Thank you. We got the Try white moment. For sure. And Sparkle. then sparkles as well. Okay, Brie, what we got? What <laughs> we got? Oh, give me yeah. the okay. okay, yes. Oh, pink. Okay, talk about the details. Show me the necklace. What we got? BB. BB. Uh huh. Little top, little something. And kicks. Oh, amazing. We walk off the bus, and as soon as you, like, the doors open, lights are flashing, whatnot. You turn a corner, you're walking down to the venue and just people are talking to you, saying, wave to the camera, do this and that. I'm carrying my camcorder with me and so I'm like passing it off to people, oh, can you video this, can you video that? Showing them how to use it. It was really cool getting to have that experience with all those girls and just seeing everybody all dressed up, take the pictures, small chit chat here and there and get to the orange carpet. Talk me through your fit here. It's giving very much professional but sexy at the Okay, okay. Okay. When we first got in there after the orange carpet, it was still just excitement. It's, you know, we're taking our class picture, you all see the balls and everything. But once things started to die down and people started getting to their places and it was kind of quiet and they're starting the broadcast, then it kind of gets to be nervous. They put the draft board up there, the teams, the first round picks. And, you know, you've talked to a lot of people in the first round. And so it's like, where am I gonna end up? Who are they gonna choose where? I could have gone a variety of places. With the first pick, in the 2023 WNBA Draft, the Indiana Fever select Aaliyah Boston, University of South Carolina. Everybody knew Aaliyah was gonna go number one for a while now, so it was just kind of like waiting to hear her name. But it was, it was really special to kind of be in that environment the same time that that's happening for her. So when they said Aaliyah, it was just nothing but joy for her. Just so happy. Love her, love the family. So it was really cool to just be a part of that moment. The camera came over to my table like twice already before we got to Atlanta. They came over for two other teams. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, is this it? Like, let me smile, let me be happy, whatever. With the sixth pick in the 2023 WNBA draft, the Atlanta Dream select Haley Jones Stanford University. Once they finally said Atlanta, it was just like a release of just like happiness, joy, hugging my mom, dad, brother. 
and I was really just locked in on my family. And so I got in, gave up my mom a hug immediately, and she hugs me and said, you know, like, we're going home because all of our extended family lives here in Georgia. It's only people in California are my immediate family and then both sets of grandparents. And so it's really kind of like a homecoming in a way with everybody being out here. So that's what she said in that hug. And then my dad was just like, I'm so proud of you, this and that. And then my brother was just like, ATL, baby, like all this stuff, here we go. And then it was a blur from there on. I went up on the stage, I didn't want to trip. And then hugging uh, the commissioner, smiling. And then it went really quickly from there. Okay, Haley is usually one of the most composed young women I've ever met. You said you're shaking right now. It's different when your name is called. What is it like? Yeah, this is uh, more nervous than I've been in any basketball game so far, but it's it's just surreal right now. There aren't really words to describe it. Got drafted, make the little round, take your picture on the stage, come back, talk to Holly, and then you can go through those double doors. I was behind them things for like three hours. And then we had media just waiting there. And so probably did 20,000 interviews. I saw agents, boyfriend, gave them hugs. And then I felt like I didn't see them for years. I just went on to the back, taking elevators up and down, taking pictures, doing media, doing this and that. All of a sudden I'm at a press conference. And mind you, I haven't seen my mom, my dad, my brother, and I don't know how long at this point. And I don't have my phone. And so I'm in the press conference and they're asking me the typical questions, talking about this and that, figuring out what to say. And then this one reporter was talking about oh, you know, Haley, like, your head coach is trying to reach you. She tweeted at you. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, I haven't even seen my phone since, I don't know, four hours ago before the draft even began. Hashtag pick up your phone. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, coach, if you're listening, uh, or if you're going to see this interview, I'm so sorry. So I had to apologize to the media, to my coach, that I swear I'm excited to come to Atlanta. Like, I'm just not at my phone. Call you when I can, I guess. Uh, the second I get to my phone, no matter how many missed calls I have, Miss Tech's calling her immediately. Um, but, you know, I hope she knows how excited I am to get to the A. After the media tour ended, got to take pictures in my, like holding the Atlanta jersey and doing the hat and everything. And then uh, Letitia and I were at the stop at the same time. And so we got to take like our drafty picture together, which was cool. I think it really hit me after the media tour ended. Um, I was walking back. So my agent and boyfriend came, he brought me shoes. I was like, oh my God, you're my savior. Got to put on shoes, it felt amazing. And we walked back to the hotel and just on the walk back, we were talking and I was just like, wow, like I'm a professional now. Like I'm gonna go to work and I'm not with student athletes, I'm with coworkers, colleagues, like, oh my gosh, taxes, paychecks, all this different stuff, the benefits, all that jazz, like I have to figure out now. And it was also just like, I have to move across the country. Like there was a lot of logistics that needed to be figured out. But just kind of on that walk back by ourselves, just getting to break it down, what really just happened was really cool. What's goody? Um, just got drafted. Uh -oh. I'm with my entourage here, entourage including my parents, my brother, assistant coach, agents, my family friends, quite the entourage. Um, just got drafted to the Atlanta Dream. Cam, Cam, show me your dream hat. Yeah, we here. Awesome. We here. Oh, ATL, baby. We had a very cool, calm, collected night, which was very much me. I didn't want to go out or do anything. I just wanted to like be with my people. And so we went to dinner and it was agents, family friend, boyfriend, and family. And that was it. It was just like the table of the nine of us. And we got to have some great Italian food at Carbone and just chowed down and chatted. And it was, it was really fun. Hello, Fog. Um, just made it back to my room. Shoes have left, um, fit is still fitting, makeup is still killing currently, but um, draft day was a success. It's currently 1.15 in the morning. I'm gonna knock out and go to bed. It has been a pleasure. Uh, go dream, dream on. Uh, moving to ATL.
Atlanta started to feel like home a little bit more. I know that's not at me. Oh, what's that, this car? Speed up, lady. Hey, Atlanta. Oh, new hair reveal. Hold on. Damn. I'm going back to my braids era. When I first got here, I just put a lot of pressure on myself. It was just a different level of nerves that I had that I don't perform my best with. And so it was visible to my teammates, to my coaches. They were like, Haley, like, relax. Hey, 